everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name is Gabby. I'm Tim. And together we review Kia and Hyundais every single weekday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we're not just a YouTube channel, we are a real dealership as well. Yes. We always like to make that known because we can Ooh. actually sell you guys a car, whether it be a Kia or a Hyundai, we have a dealership for that. Now today's vehicle is a very, very exciting one. And I don't know if you can tell by the color, but this is brand new. We've never had a 2024 Seltos LX front wheel drive here yet. And we've definitely never had this color before. So Tim, do you know what color this is? Pluton blue. Pluton blue. I was surprised you actually knew the color code. I did. Yes. <laughs> it's very similar code. to what would you say, a robin's egg? Yep. Yeah. What? Turquoise, robin's egg. It's absolutely stunning. Let me just do a it's quick It's gorgeous. <laughs> they said, hi, Gabby and not Mike. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> did you say your name? Yes, I Tim. Yeah, if you guys are new here, um, Tim is our general manager, and sometimes he films with me when the owner of the dealership isn't here. <laughs> Patrick is on his way back to Canada, so yes. <laughs> we're welcome back to Canada pretty soon. Yes. Um, as always, we'll show you guys how you can join our live videos if you want to catch our next one, and then we'll go through the full interior and exterior walkthrough of this vehicle. So we'll have so, Tim grab the camera. Oh, you forgot. Why do no, we do these videos? I'm doing that in a second. Come on. I'm doing that in a second. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Let's figure this out. So Let's every weekday at 2 p.m., we do these videos, and we do them for three reasons. Number one, you may own a Kia or Hyundai vehicle. Vehicle, we want to be your guides to show you everything that your vehicle offers and give you tips and tricks you may have not known. Number two, we've done a video on just about every single Kia or Hyundai available here in Canada at least. We've done <laughs> so, a lot of videos. If you are considering purchasing a new vehicle, definitely check out our channel to find out more information about those vehicles. And then number three, if you are living in Ontario, you can actually buy from us. So we have the links in our descriptions of each and every video where you can get in touch with any of our dealerships and get maybe a new car. All right, now I'll show you guys how you can join our videos. So on the Kia Hyundai channel on YouTube, it should look a little something like this. You'll see under our home tab, we have an upcoming video and that is today's vehicle, today's car, and today's me. So all you have to do is click on it. It'll load you in like a regular YouTube video would. You'll see me again, reminding me I have to fix my posture. And on the right side over here, you'll see we have our live chat box. All right, so we'll scroll up a little bit. And you guys can see we have some questions rolling in. That's where you guys can ask us about the vehicle or at the end of the video, we'll go through everything and go through all your comments. Even if they're not about the car, we'll still try to answer your questions. I'll start off with what's under the hood and it's the same two liter four cylinder MPI engine that we had in the past. The output is 147 horsepower with 132 pound feet of torque. The Seltos does come available with all wheel drive, but this is the standard or entry level trim and it is front wheel drive. So you get a little bit better fuel efficiency. You still get a ton of safety features and now the safety features are standard. So let's take a look down. <laughs> new front grille, so they did refresh it a little bit. Um, new headlight design and new grille design. Lots of nice pieces here. And then we have a front plastic skid plate at the bottom. So Tim, I'll have you show that. Gives this vehicle a more aggressive or off-road stance. And now we have an X-Line trim that is very, very off-road looking um, with a turbocharged engine. Lots of fun. So we filmed that, I think, two weeks ago if you want to check that out. Uh, but since I mentioned safety features are now standard, we have forward collision avoidance, lane keep assist, lane follow assist, and blind spot collision avoidance detection. Lots of safety features standard. <laughs> I will turn on the headlights so you guys can take a look at our new light design. There's the key, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, we have projection halogen headlights as well as projection fog lights. Take a look. So one thing about halogen lights is they do emit heat. If you are living somewhere cold like Canada, they will melt a little bit of snow and ice off your vehicle. Now, if you go to the EX trim, you'll get LED headlights if that's something you must have. All right, now we'll come to the side and check out these wheels. These wheels have been upgraded to a 17 inch alloy. This is shared with the LX front wheel drive, all wheel drive and the EX. They all have this wheel. It looks absolutely stunning. Very, very modern. You wouldn't tell this is an entry level trim by such fancy wheels. And I'll close the door so you guys can have a beautiful look at the color. Let me know what you guys think. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm excited to see what it'll look like on something like the X-Line as well, where it has more styling elements to it. But. Someone said the color is garbage. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> Here's a garbage that's can. your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. I think it looks really, really nice. Um, I should also touch base on the price. So the price is 25195 Canadian. Oh, really good pricing. And that's the entry for the Seltos, of course. 
The all-wheel drive is about $2,000 more if that's a must-have, but here I'll show you guys you do have a temporary spare tire just underneath your floorboard here and a ton more space for storage, whether you put a first aid kit or blanket, whatever you need, there's room for it underneath here. Another fun thing you can do with the Seltos is drag this floorboard out and drop it down a smidge. There we go. And now you have an even lower floorboard, which will give you this extra lip on the side here. Um, good if you have anything that could roll around so it doesn't roll out of your tailgate or your cargo area when you open it up. <laughs> now I'll close this. Check out that rear end. <laughs> so for our high mounted brake light, it is a full LED and I will hit that for you guys in a second. And we have a brand new design. So the rear tail light will extend all across the back of the vehicle. I think it looks stunning. Tim, what do you think? Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> there we go. Auto show. Yes. Gorgeous. <laughs> now we'll take a look at the side here. You can see our brain fart. Oh my gosh. Roof rails. Roof rails are there. <laughs> nice, eh? <laughs> yep. We'll I know what you're going to say. Front. Check it out. It is beautiful. I'm still not over the color. I think it looks so, so good, guys. I think it'd be right. easy to find in the parking lot. Absolutely. <laughs> and of course, since we never had this color before, you're not going to see very many of them on the road. Not nope. yet, at least. Not yet. The Seltos is definitely one of our most popular vehicles, so that might change quickly. Now I'll have Tim quickly pan inside to show you guys before I hop in. With the LX trims, you do get this cloth seat pattern. You Keep remembering, everyone, this is a base model. Yes, this is an entry level. This is entry level. So when you think about what you get in this car, you get a lot. It's great value. <laughs> You get great, great, great value. Um, I will mention that the front seats, both of them, so driver and passenger, are heated, and you get three different levels of heat for these seats. When you go up to the EX trim, you will get a heated steering wheel as well, and the seats become a synthetic leather seating. All right, now I'm going to quickly hop in. And while these seats are manual, there's still very many adjustments you can make to them. So you do have height, which you can drop it down, bring it up, of course, you can get closer or further from the steering wheel, and then you can adjust your backrest with this lever right over here. Steering wheel is also adjustable, just right over here. There we go. And I'll show you some of these buttons on the left side over here. So we have a brightness adjustment here, which will change the brightness of your digital display and your main screen. We also have our auto stop and start. So this will temporarily shut off your engine when you reach a complete stop. So think stop and go traffic or just a long, busy intersection. Uh, this is going to help conserve fuel, by the way. And then we have our traction control to turn it off. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's Monday. It's been a couple days since we filmed. I'm forgetting all these words. Now for the steering wheel, we have this beautiful, beautiful wheel. All your Bluetooth and media controls on the very left side. So I'll have Tim show that we have our voice commands here. As long as your phone is connected to the Bluetooth, you can use your phone's voice commands or you can use key as general. We also have our volume controls, which if you press this down, it'll quickly mute whatever it is you're listening to. This is great if you're taking an, or if you're placing an order at drive through or just talking to somebody in the car and you need no sound. We also have our phone button to answer phone call and a favorite button that you can program to do whatever you'd like with the vehicle. So when I press this, it'll take me to my menu and I'll quickly grab this from Tim. Oh, he's gonna get the hood. All right, so when I press that favorite button, it takes me to this menu here. I'm gonna stop talking when he brings it down because you guys will hear a bang. Oh, boom, okay. <laughs> All right, so this brings us to this menu here where you can choose what you'd like the button to do. So if you want it to be a rejector end call button, that's its job now. But since this is my car, I'm gonna leave it to none. You also have a custom button right over here on your steering wheel. <laughs> so over here, there it is. Okay, there we go. <laughs> you can make this do another task, whatever you'd like it to do. So when I press this, it'll take me to my home screen. Super easy to use, super convenient. I'm really glad that they added this to their vehicles. And then on the right side here, we have a couple driver assistance settings or buttons and then our menu. So this is brand new for the Kia Seltos in 2024. And this is our 4.2 inch cluster. So this is the 4.2 that we're talking about. This is digital as well too, but you can't really change or control this. Of course, it's your speedometer and your tachometer in a digitalized form. You can change the color of these bars right over here. Um, if you're more of a red, blue, or purple type of person, that's up to you. But first, I'm gonna press this button here and show you what we can play around with on this main center of the cluster. So we can see our lane keep assist menu. It shows me that my lane assist system is on, and so is our auto stop and start. It also gives you your distance to empty, and it will tell you when you have a door open pretty accurate if you ask me <laughs> I'll press that button one more time 
and we'll show you our drive info. So this is of course gonna give you your fuel readings, um, your average and your trip info. You also have your auto stop timer and then our user assistance or driver assistance and user settings. So I'm gonna select it by pressing down on this toggle here. Then we can see what driver assistances come with the LX option. So for warning volume, you can play around with it. If you think it's a little bit too high or a bit too low, you can put it medium. There we go. And it gives you a little demo. <laughs> we also have driver attention warning and this vehicle will let you know when the car ahead of you is left. So this is great for stoplights or even just being in stop and go traffic. It'll let you know once they're gone. For driving safety, you have your forward collision avoidance, so forward safety. You can also change the warning to be a little bit later or put it back to normal. Lane safety, so to turn it on or off, you can quickly toggle it here, just like that, and then blind spot. You also have safe exit, which means if you parallel park this vehicle on a busy street and you go to open the door, but there's a vehicle in your blind spot, it'll prevent you or warn you from opening your door. So this is great, no missing doors and everybody's safe. Now I'll have Tim come over to the passenger side and we'll go through everything else. I guess we'll turn the fan off too. A little less noisy. All right, Tim. <laughs> so there's one more thing I want to touch on on the steering wheel before we move over to the main screen. And that is this button here. And this is my favorite button in the entire world. This is our lane follow assist. So once I press this, I'm going to get an icon on my dash up here. So see how that's there? Now it's gone, now it's back. This is going to read the lanes ahead of me and will gently provide some steering input. So if there was, I don't know, some sort of obstacle in the road, a box or a piece of garbage. I could still like evade it by giving, of course, my driver input. But once I'm back on the road, the vehicle will gently steer for me and it reads super, super well. It's not gonna advise you wrong. Um, one thing I will notice, or I do notice, is if um, there's a departing lane, so getting off on a ramp, it will wanna pull over there, but with gentle correction, it'll get you back on track. I absolutely love it and I love it on the highway. Right beside that, we have our cruise control. So this is just a standard cruise control in this vehicle, but super easy to use, super convenient. Turn it on, set your speed, and then you can pause it or restart it there. All right, now let's check out the main screen. So this is our classic eight inch touchscreen display. I'll actually peel the sticker off for you guys. Oh, oh. it's stuck. Oh, <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> All right, so I'll put it in the center console for our detailers to find later. All right, in this main screen here, we have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And yes, you heard that right, wireless Apple CarPlay in a Kia or Hyundai vehicle, yep. So even our top vehicles or our top trim levels do not have this feature. It's absolutely amazing to use. All you have to have is either an Apple or Android phone and Bluetooth connection, and it'll directly or seamlessly project onto your main screen here, giving you access to all those apps that you have on your phone, whether it be Spotify, Google Maps, um, Apple Music, it'll all be here, super easy to use. If you're not a fan of that, you have your regular radio, so AM, FM, no Sirius XM in this vehicle, unfortunately, but you can project that through Bluetooth. And then of course you can make phone calls directly through your vehicle as well. You have physical buttons for radio and media, as well as that favorite button I mentioned earlier, but the screen itself is a touch screen. So you can go through all of those different menus just by pressing the screen here, or so can your passenger. You have a little something called quiet mode as well. So if you have rear passengers, whether they be kids, adults, or even pets, and they don't want to hear any noise, you can press this and it'll mute the speakers in the back, allowing the driver and passenger to still hear any sort of media, but the people in the back have a nice quiet space. And it really creates almost like a sound shield. It's very nice. All right, now we'll move on down. We have some beautiful vents here, as well as our climate control. So again, air conditioning or cold air, and then warmer air, super easy to control. Press your AC button, set your fan speed, recirculated air or fan direction right over here. You also have a rear windshield defrost, super easy to use. You click that on. Once the system's on, <laughs> I guess we'll have to have the heat on. <laughs> All right, and then down here, we have this beautiful shelf, which is great if you are charging a phone because it sticks right on and the surface is a little bit grippy. Um, so your phone won't slide around. <laughs> Below that, so it's so hard to film this area, right, Tim? Oh. The gimbal freaks out. Um, but right over here, we have a 12 volt, a USB in the center, and then a USB-C because this is 2024, for the Celtos at least, we're not in 2024 yeah. yet, um, which charges much faster. Now, right over here, we have our drive mode select. So we got normal, sport, and smart, and you'll see it project on the display up here to let you know what mode you're in. Normal mode's just gonna be a nice smooth drive, very, very fuel efficient in this vehicle, but not overly peppy. Obviously not sluggish either. 
Sport mode is going to amplify that throttle response, stiffen your steering a little bit and create a more sport-like feel. And smart mode is going to adapt to whatever you're doing. So if you were flooring it to get on the highway or to pass somebody, it's going to temporarily switch you into sport. But then as you ease off the throttle, it'll bring you back to a normal mode. It's generally the most fuel efficient way to drive just because it is making sense to whatever it is you're doing. If your car is in eco mode, but you're flooring it all the time, it's not really going to be in eco mode, is it? It's just going to limit itself a little bit. Um, so this is a great way to drive. I definitely recommend smart mode. All right. Now down here, we have our heated seat controls, our shift knob, of course our all-wheel drive lock. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I said this vehicle is front-wheel drive. It is an all-wheel drive. <laughs> it was just tagged wrong. But the features are the same on the LX front-wheel drive and the all-wheel drive, so everything will look exactly the same, minus this button here. Heated seat for the passenger, and then our downhill braking assist right over there. Center console, we got our cups, our handbrake, which arguably is maybe better than an electronic parking brake because you can actually control the amount of brake force. So if you're ever in an emergency situation where you don't have brakes, this is the way to go. <laughs> and now in here we have that plastic that I peeled off the screen, but also our center console compartment. It is quite deep and pretty wide, so you can fit a lot of things in there. Tim, you want to show the glove box? <laughs> He's like, no. <laughs> glove box. All right, two manuals. self manuals, French, French and English. More plastic. Love plastic. It's good size. Great it is size. A very good size. Oh, that's the license plates. You can put a lot of things in there. Yeah. All right. There you go. <laughs> now we'll close up the front of this vehicle and check out the rear. Okay. So without adjusting our seats, Tim is, of course, a little taller than me takes up more space. Um, I still had my seat a pretty good distance back. Tim's like, oh, you think I'd take up space? <laughs> um, I have lots of room between There's my legs. Yeah, lots yeah. and lots of space. Um, underneath the seat, you can tell it's quite high. So if you do need room for your feet or just a bag or anything, there is lots and lots of room under there. Um, I will say on the Seltos, and this is the all-wheel drive, mind you, so the floorboard will be a little bit higher for the bottom hmm. of the floor. It's still not too high to the point where I feel like I'm hunched together, which is very nice. And then I do have ample room on the sides, depending on how close I am with the people sitting beside me. Um, I could put my feet over there and be very, very comfy. All right, we'll show the seating material. So you do have a little bit of design in the center inserts of the seat. And I will say they do have a little bit of give, so you do sink in a little bit. It's also really nice on your back because you can dig into it, so seep into it almost like a couch very very comfortable you have no cup holder armrest on the lx trim trims i should say but still very very comfy um, car seat anchors on all these seats and then they do fold down so if you are putting a lot of stuff in the back you can fold them down super super easy and they go in a 60 40 split so you can pick and choose which side you want up or down there you go you saw how easy it was one hand all right well let's answer some questions <laughs> All right. Jump back. Bring it up. Wrong way. <laughs> that is not up. <laughs> there we are. All right, I'll bring it down a bit bring so we down, can see the car. So you see the car. There we go. And I'll yep. take a couple steps Let's back. Let's colors. Oh, Zoran said a robin's egg is much lighter. I'm sorry. Okay. It's a different type of robin, Zoran. Yes, this is a different robin. Um, you'll watch the feet zoom in, Tim. <laughs> Oh, no. Please, no. <laughs> Tim reminds me of Vladimir Putin. Oh, my goodness. Tim, what, why are you over there? Sorry, Come over buddy. here. <laughs> Can you see that far? Yeah, we're good. I okay. can see everything. Okay. The 24 Seltos, you're right, Brian, is, is built in Korea. Um, so all of our models are built in Korea. You're correct. This is a good question for you. Are there any updates on the delay at the port waiting for, for a Sportage PHEV SX? No updates as, as of this point. So mm -hmm. we'll probably find out something this week, but yeah, that's, it's a slow vehicle, he unfortunately. Said you're a much younger and cooler Putin. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, does lane keep assist require the vehicle to go at certain speeds? Yes. So lane keep assist and lane follow assist are two separate features. So if you guys remember when I was showing the main cluster, there was an icon that looked like a car with two lanes beside it. And then there was the steering wheel icon. 
So the one with the car is lane keep, which requires you to be above the speed, of, I believe it's 50 or 55 kilometers per hour. And then it almost yeah. ping pongs you in your lane. So if you start to verge to the left, it'll, pull you back, it'll yeah. give you, yeah, it'll beep it at you pull, yeah. and then it pulls you back. The other system is lane follow assist and that works even at a stop. I'll still have my steering wheel or the l wheel light indicating green, which means it's reading. So even if I'm creeping and slow stop and go traffic, it still sees the lanes and it'll still steer for me. Um, I like turning the first one off, so the ping pong one, and then leaving the driver assistance or steering assistance on because it's so much smoother and it doesn't beep, which is very nice. But you can pick and choose. If you don't like either of them, you can turn them off. They're super easy to turn off, turn back on. Mm -hmm. uh, um, let's see. How does the highway driving assist differ from the other lane keep and lane follow assist? Is Assist systems combined. So highway drive assist is, does exactly well, highway. So it's gonna assist you with driving on the highway. So um, let's say I take the 403 a lot, for example. The 403 is a registered highway and Kia system. It knows the speed limit of the road. It knows if there's a huge bend in the road and it knows if the speed limit changes. So let's say it goes from 100 to 110. My vehicle will actually change the speed limit for me, providing that the vehicle ahead of me is not um, too close. So if everyone's crawling at a 50 because, I don't know, there's something on the road, it's not going to go 100 or 110. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that would not be good. <laughs> um, so I'll we'll use the input from the vehicle ahead of you and then the speed limit input. You can turn the speed limit off if you don't want yes. that and set it to whatever you want it to be. And then it'll steer for me too. So it does a lot. It kind of just combines all of its safety features into one really convenient driver assistance. Yes. Uh, Zorin says I've got Caddyshack uh, pants on from Rodney Dangerfield. It's actually Zorin. It's actually a whole suit. So I've got the Caddyshack suit. That's good. Gabby, I, I miss you. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna I, miss I her a lot. She's gonna too. be gone next week. So. Oh yeah. Um, I She's guess away I next week. <laughs> I started off this video with saying we go live every weekday at 2 p.m. So. Not next week. Except for next week. <laughs> yeah. I will be on vacation. Much needed. <laughs> 23 um, <laughs> Kia Forte GT convinced me to get the car. Yeah, great cars. We just delivered one on Saturday. Beautiful car. Um, oh, someone said, Gabby, if I remember correctly, you drove the Santa Cruz over the weekend. How'd you like it? I absolutely yep. loved it. Unfortunately, I didn't get to film everything I wanted to film because it was pouring rain all day yesterday, but it was a lot of fun. Seriously, a lot of fun. It's a cool car. Yes. Something <laughs> different in the marketplace, for sure. Yes. <laughs> for our Hyundai sisters. Um... Okay, I'm going to scroll up a little bit because we missed miss so many something? questions while we were filming. Yeah. Um, let's see. Great. Paul said great uh, vehicle for recent grads. You're exactly right. Good entry level vehicle. Great value. You're right, Paul. Let's see. Peeling the clear film off. <laughs> that's a f oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Started as ASMR. Ended up making a farting noise. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, guys. That's wonderful. That was the, the screen yeah, protector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it off. <laughs> So um, satisfying, right? Kevin and Zoran were fighting. Guys, yeah, I please, think they're fighting back and forth. Please, no fighting in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a safe place. Um, let's see. Okay, we'll go back to the bottom. What's the difference between the Seltos and a Sportage? Well, they're two completely different vehicles. Yes. The Sportage is definitely much bigger. Um, different engine, different transmission, different S vehicle. <laughs> a Sportage is almost the size of a Sorento now, probably. The old Sorento, yeah. The old Sorento or the new Sorento side by side. You'll see that a Sportage is much bigger than it was in previous years, 21s and 22s. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Seltos is the same size, but um, when you're looking at all three models, um, depending on the size of your family, what you want to do, um, all three models will could fit your family for <laughs> sure. What's this? <laughs> this made me laugh. Uh. Um, uh, Kevin said, you guys need a monitor for a comments. Yep. Yep. It, we do. Um, <laughs> imagine fighting in a car selling channels chat. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> um, do any Seltos models have adaptive cruise control? And yes, the EX premium is where you'll get a couple of those more advanced safety features like your highway drive well. assist. Yeah. Yeah. X line. Yeah. X line. So X line. EX so premium and above. Above. <laughs> yes. Um, we have an X-Line to test drive. We kept a higher line model here. I don't see any so of these like, fighting comments. I don't. Oh, uh, we're good. Okay. <laughs> we're all good. Um, Blair likes that color. Thank Blair, you, Blair. I wish this came in the sole. I feel like you'd like that on the sole. That'll look cool. Um, 24 Kona. 24 Kona. Where is that? 
Sorry, oh, I just I look, grabbed it. You just grabbed it there. Oh, I look forward to seeing how this sizes up to the new and larger 2024 Kona, since they're supposedly about the same size. Yes, that's going to be very, very interesting. Close. Platforms. Um, for the past couple of years, the Seltos and the Kona, of course, they're the competitive cars, right? Similar, yeah. similar yeah. price, but the Seltos was always bigger, so it had a little bit of an advantage. You know what I mean? It was more SUV-like when the Kona mm. was a bit more crossover-like. Um, so now that the Kona is bigger, it's going to be interesting. Yes. We definitely have to do a side-by-side -side comparison video of those two. Paul, the most expensive Seltos right now is called the X-Line. So we went from an SX Turbo, and now the X-Line is the most expensive by maybe $1,000. So it's probably touching the 40 mark now, or mm -hmm. very close to it. Like, I'm going to say 39.8 plus freight and air. So mm -hmm. you're, you're right on the price point. Um, are any Nero PHEVs coming in anytime soon? We've had our first go, but uh, those have been straight EVs and HEVs. Mm -hmm. um, PHEVs we had one. I have not seen yet. We had one. We had one. Yes. Um, we, just took, um, we just took a PHEV, a 2020 PHEV, in on our Tesla Model 3 that uh, we finished up this weekend. So we do have a used one coming in with very low kilometers, 32K. So Paul asked earlier, what's the wait time for a specific color and model for the Seltos, both in the United States and Canada? Unfortunately, I have no concept of timelines for the states at all. Yeah. Now, now Paul, to, to answer your question as far as Canada goes, it'll be our number one volume car in Canada. Um, they've given us extra uh, allotment to come into Canada. Uh, but again, wait times three to six months on average right now, depending on, on model line. Mm -hmm. So, and colors, of course. So we, what we ask cus customers are, can we get an EX Premium and can you get it in Snow White Pearl, mm -hmm. Gravity Gray, Steel Gray, or some of the newer colors, and how long are you willing to wait? As long um, as we have extra colors, we send, stand a better chance of seeing the car sooner. <laughs> just helps Kia Canada. You find any other ones? Um, I was just trying to find where the fighting was. Oh. <laughs> um, Dale said, drinking from Gabby's fountain of knowledge. Thank yes, you. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> the reason why I don't remember anyone's birthdays or anything. It's Your just head's full of uh, <laughs> owner's manuals. 147 horsepower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. It seems to be a decent stock available here in Ohio so far. Okay, oh. so in the States, I feel yeah. like you guys probably yeah. get better. Yeah, so Brian <laughs> asks, how, how do dealership wait lists work? Um, I, can't, I can't answer for other dealerships, but our wait list is is quite easy. Um, we number them obviously by deposit and, and bills of sales. We also tell people that if they change their mind, obviously a bill of sale is only good for 90 days. Mm -hmm. uh, probably everyone doesn't read the back of a bill of sale, but they're only good for 90 days. Um, and as you get onto these lists, let's say EV9, they're talking about EV9 right now, we probably have 25 to 30 EV9s. Um, we number them by date and deposit. Uh, we do DocuSign so you don't have to come into the dealership. Um, so we try to save people. But uh, Brian, I hope that answers your question. Uh, we try not to lose anyone on these lists. We try to keep them all in order and between myself, Pat, Garth, everyone else that, that keeps everyone in check as mm -hmm. such, we, we call our customers back and we tell them what we can do. Um. I don't know what their name is. It looks like... Sean? No. no. Right. How tall are you, Gabby? I'm trying to understand how much room there is in the back. I'm about 5'3", but I'm wearing heels. So you're probably like 5... I'm probably like 6'2", <laughs> or something. <laughs> She's something like 5'5". Like five five. <laughs> yeah. Um, can we please address the elephant in the room? Will this Seltos need a complete engine replacement anytime soon? The answer is no. The Seltos nope. has been a very solid car for us. Yes. Very solid. Uh, whether it's uh, naturally aspirated or turbo engines, mm -hmm. we've had no issues. So engine transmission, final drivetrains. I'm not sure what engine we would put in, but... Wait, what? We don't have any engines. Oh. <laughs> They're all the normal engines. Yeah. She is 5'6". Um, okay, so you're 5'6 now. Maybe. <laughs> um, I didn't know I got taller. <laughs> Uh, can y'all order the Kia Seltos with the paddle shifters like what's in the Asian market has? No, so we used to have the Seltos with paddle shifters on the SX Turbo because it had a dual clutch transmission. Mm -hmm. But now that they reverted to an 8-speed regular automatic, we have no more paddle shifters. Someone saying from Seattle to Canada, Kia Hyundai having issues with knock sensors, uh, bearing in 2010 to 2020 engines. 
this seems to be a major problem. I think you can go on any blog and tell any, any person um, you've got a major problem with any type of engine or transmission, but it's certainly not a major problem for Kia or Hyundai. Mm -hmm. um, I also saw this, la this is probably the last question we'll take for today's video, yeah. just so it's not too, too long. Are you able to put a set of golf clubs in the back without having to lower the back seats? And the answer is, maybe. <laughs> we'll seconds. have to try. Oh, no, do, I, do get, you okay. I got Pat's golf clubs. Oh, okay. <laughs> Open the back. <laughs> We're getting this done. Um, I'm gonna get ready. He said I look taller. Okay. <laughs> Let's open this up. I, I just, um, they were sitting in his office, that's why. I thought, hey, there's a chance of putting the clubs in. Oh yeah. Now do you want, there was probably a chance you could probably put Four sets of clubs? Four? Like if you had four people, one, two, three, four, without moving, dropping down the back seat. So that's wide, and we've got the bottom drop down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you put your clubs this way, this way, but they're in, in between the center. Yeah, there's definitely room for there's, another one for sure. Yeah, so definitely if, if someone was golfing with uh, three of their friends, and they have four sets of clubs without, um, without the carts, uh, I would say there'd be no problem putting four sets of clubs in. Does that make sense? Yeah, to me it does. <laughs> yeah, these are Pat's clubs, they're not my clubs, so. How's that? I think it's good. Is that I, our last question? I think that's probably our last question. It's a, good, it's a great question because everyone talks about okay. clubs <laughs> or whatever they have. A couple of comments about Pat's clubs. I'll let Pat uh, we, yeah. <laughs> answer those when he it's gets back. Good. Um, I think, yeah, we'll probably end off today's video. Thank you guys again so Thank much you. for joining. I will see you again tomorrow. Hopefully we're filming a Hyundai, if we got Mike. <laughs> and That'll then, okay. unfortunately, I won't see you guys next week, but I'll try my best to put out as much videos as we can this week. So hopefully it'll make up for it. Got it. All right. Thank you <laughs> Have very a good much. rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you.